detectives. A recent report said crime in 2020 had ravaged Atlanta like never before. Murders were up 48% in 2020 over 2019. Now, a murder of a seven-year-old girl out Christmas shopping shouldn't happen anywhere. It shouldn't happen, of course. But the fact that it happened in the Buckhead neighborhood of Atlanta has changed things. It's a ritzy area. A group of Atlanta City Council members from the area are now pushing for a private police force to patrol Buckhead. And what about the rest of Atlanta? Will they get a private police force as well? Probably not. What about the rest of Georgia, for that matter? That's also at stake in these Senate runoff elections. So while everyone is talking about the four candidates, let's not forget about little Kennedy Maxey. Her family has set up a GoFundMe page in her memory. All the candidates in the Senate runoff race say they support the police, except the Democrats have a track record in places like Atlanta and New York in Philadelphia in Portland and Seattle of not doing so. So who are we supposed to believe here? Let's talk more about the defund the police movement with Detective Christopher Young. He is from the Seattle Police Department. Detective Young, great to talk to you. Great to talk to you, John. And uh, the reason we invited you on here is because you wrote a great opinion piece in the New York Post and you come out and say you are a progressive, but you, you really want to debunk the defund the police department movement, the myths of the defund the police department movement. You have broken it down basically into four myths. So let's put them up on the screen and go through them real quickly, and then I'll ask you to break them down one by one. You say police are not killing large numbers of civilians. You say the anti-cop movement is not largely peaceful. Also, you say abolishing police uh, would, in fact, lead to lawlessness, lawlessness. That's what I'm trying to say here. And that police are not militarized. Now, I did that kind of backwards, but let's go through this and talk about these one by one here. Um, what, first, though, why did you feel the need to put this out there like this? Well, my concern as a citizen of Seattle is that this, these false narratives are being put out, and because of cancel culture, nobody is pushing back because they don't want to Yes, it, nobody is. It, it, it doesn't seem like until after the fact. I mean, we heard Joe Biden's own words and some another of uh, Democratic leaders coming out saying what really hurt them down ballot was the defund the police movement. And now as a progressive, you know, you think this is hurting the Democratic Party? Is that your, that's your point? I, I am progressive and I'm all in on police reform. I think there's a there's a lot of room to improve. But I am not familiar with improving any um, type of endeavor by starving it of resources. So my great fear is we are going to undo 50 years of enormous police reform. And I gave some statistics from the New York Police Department. They're, they, they keep really good records of what their officers do, and it's all right there for anybody to see. I'll quote it. I have the article right here in front of me. And you talk about how New York has kept, you know, meticulous records of every police and shooting since 1971 here. Their annual report shows a dramatic sustained drop in killings by police from 93 in 1971 to just five in 2018. And again, this is completely against the narrative you hear from a lot of elected officials across the country, Democrats specifically. Yeah. And uh, those uh, lower uses of force have been accompanied by enormous drops in violent crime. And that is why it is so tragic that we see many big cities in the United States getting increased violent crime. Um, even my city, Seattle, normally has low crime. I believe we had 28 murders in 2019, 2020. I think we were up to 57. I'm not uh, exactly certain on that, but it's very close. So it doubled in one year. Yeah, and I don't think it's a it's a coincidence that there's a you know an uptick in crime when you talk about people defunding the police. To your point, nothing really ever gets better by starving it of resources, and that's really what this is about. It's not about helping the police because we'd be talking about some of those other things you point out in your op-ed piece in the New York Post, and we encourage people to read that because there are ways to improve the relationship between communities and police departments. But it doesn't seem like a lot of people who are running for office or holding office really want to talk about those things. And as a progressive, the irony to me is that starve the beast is a right wing strategy for very conservative people that want a smaller government. Yes, and as, the, as conservatives learned uh, during the George W. Bush administration, uh, that doesn't always work. The government seems to always get bigger, even when you try to starve the beast. Uh, we got to run. We're out of time, unfortunately, but we would love to have you back to talk more about this. We do encourage folks to check out the article up on the New York Post from Detective Christopher Young from the Seattle Police Department. We appreciate your time, sir. Thanks so much.
Thanks for having me on, John. Newsmax TV is now America's fastest growing cable news channel. We give you the real news you need. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, share it with your friends. Newsmax TV streams live on YouTube for free. Newsmax TV, real news for real people.